Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're comparing the old version of the Ford Expedition to the new version of the Ford Expedition. Pretty straightforward. Before we get into the comparison, though, I do want to mention that my car buying course is available for sale. Link to that in the description down below. And with that being said, let's get right into the comparison. Popping under the hood of the previous version, Expedition, we have a twin turbo 3.5 liter V6. It goes through a 10 speed automatic transmission. It's good for 375 horsepower and then 470 pound feet of torque. Uh, and that was pretty much the only tune you could get for the previous version of the Expedition. And now moving from that to the new version, again, we've got a twin turbo 3.5 liter V6, goes through a 10 speed automatic transmission. Now the base tune is 400 horsepower and 480 pound feet of torque, but if you get a performance edition, you move that up to 440 for the horsepower and then 510 pound feet of torque. Uh, so there has been a substantial increase for the limited. Now moving from that to the old version of the limited, you can see here with the accenting from a front end perspective you've got like lots of uh, chrome which i think uh, you know gives it that kind of like luxury appearance and then you can see here with the hood it's raised on either side uh, similar to the f-150 um, so that hasn't really changed that much stylistically as you'll see in a moment got the c-shaped running lights here and see just how bread or bright rather the headlights are bread that's funny i that's that's a good one anyways got the rest of the chrome accenting there on the front end and again, notice how it kind of like all goes in a line. I think that's pretty cool stylistically with what Ford has done. Ford logo there in the center with the chrome. And then you can see again more chrome accenting off to the side where the fog light lives its days. And then you can see the parking sensors there on the front end. Then the air dam at the very bottom. And you know, overall, it's, it's a good looking vehicle from a front end perspective. Now moving over to the new one. You can see that uh, they've definitely sharpened things up quite a bit. Um, so I noticed the Expedition logo is blacked out. This one, um, right, has the performance package on it it's, and it's the stealth package as well. But anyway, you can see the hood's raised on either side. And notice with the coloration of this paint looks really good. Still have the C-shaped uh, LEDs. Just looks a little bit different than you have reflector LEDs for the headlights. And then you can see the blacked out front grille with the Ford logo there in the center. And then notice here at the fog light housing and then parking sensor still there on the front end and then trims blacked out there. Um, we do have an air dam there at the bottom, um, but again, just kind of has more of like a modern appearance. And then popping here to the side, you can see here with the tire and wheel setup, you know, it kind of has that normal luxury car appearance, right? With the silver uh, on top. And then you can see there with the uh, silver trim there at the very bottom as well. And notice with the door handles, they also have more of that uh, chrome trim. So it kind of like all blends together. Popping over to the new Expedition. Uh, again, this one having stealth package has the blacked out wheels with the silver rings around them and then the red brake caliper. So it definitely has a sportier appearance uh, compared to the previous version of the Limited. And uh, definitely, definitely love that look. Uh, me personally, I, I think the wheels look great and I think the brake calipers look great as well. And you can see there with the accenting uh, over the fender flare, or not the fender flare, the fender rather, and then down the bodywork as well with the lines. Now notice from a side view perspective, they look pretty much the same, right? That hasn't changed uh, between the Expeditions. And then this one does have the pop-out uh, side steps. Now, opening up the rear of the previous version of the Expedition, uh, notice pops up pretty quick. And then uh, storage space back here is decent so uh, notice here with the controls you can lower down all of well all the seats you can raise the uh, third row though which is pretty cool as well and you guys will see uh, that demonstrated in this video and it's you know it's actually pretty quick notice the second row folds down but you can't you have to fold it back up yourself manually and then with the third row notice again like i said you can fold it back up and uh, these are both expedition maxes so they both have the same like storage space behind the third row uh, and this is similar to like a Suburban in terms of size there in the back. So you actually have a trunk and, while the third row is folded up, which is uh, pretty cool, I think. And then notice, you know, pretty quick with the actuation back down. But finishing things up here with the rear, you can see with the lights 
definitely nice in terms of how those are stylized. I think they look great while they're on. And then notice we've got our max badge to let everyone know that you got the longer version. Parking sensors there on the bottom. Uh, I've got the bezel that covers the receiver hitch as well. And again, it has a boxy design from a rear perspective. Popping over to the new one, you can see here with the functions on the key fob again, basically the same and same key fob as well, right? And notice with the storage space system, right? That's not really any different. And storage space again, like I said, it's unchanged. And then notice it has all the same functions to fold down the second row and then fold down and raise up the third row. So that hasn't changed. So that'll be familiar if you're moving up to the new one. And then I'll still even have the 12 volt back there. And yeah, so I, I think they did a good job with that. Uh, in terms of keeping that the same because it'll it'll feel familiar for people that are you know upgrading to the new one now going over things stylistically in the rear the taillights are different right but other than that uh, again everything else is like the same from a rear perspective as you guys will see but the design on the taillights i think looks really good the, the other taillights i don't think they look bad but these ones definitely look uh, a little bit more modern a little bit sleeker and then again all the blacked out badging got the max logo again and so, yeah, I just noticed lots of carryover, right? So that is pretty much, you know, like I said, unchanged when you go over the rears of both the vehicles. Now, popping to the interior, you can see here with the padding there at the top of the stitching and then more down below. And then the uh, wood trim, that's kind of interesting how that's integrated there, the door panel. Definitely, definitely looks interesting. Speaker for the sound system down below. I love the circle look, but anyways, here are the seats. So you can see really nice padding and stitching is perforated there in the center portion of the seat. Got a bunch of different adjustments on the seat itself. And getting in is actually really easy. Yeah, this is when I, uh, I filmed this video when I used to uh, talk more when the camera was faced towards me, so it's kind of funny to see that. But anyways, you can see here with the climate controls there for the rear, and then you got some charging ports as well, and then an outlet. So there's it's quite a bit happening uh, down there, which is nice. And then the armrests, you can see just how thick those are. So it's interesting. And then popping the third row, it's not too bad. Uh, and the thing about these full-size SUVs is you can actually fit adults in the back. Whereas, you know, with smaller SUVs, you can't. And that's, that's one of the reasons why people will go for these full-size SUVs is just that ability. And then notice those controls for the seats in front. So it's another added thing of practicality to help people get out of the third row. And then popping back over to the new Expedition. So let's kind of go over the key points that are different. So notice here with the red stitching and uh, notice the door panel that was pretty much unchanged, right? So instead of having wood trim, right, they've just darkened everything for this package, but it's unchanged. Same thing with the seats. Got the red stitching still perforated in the center. Uh, notice got the power side steps to help out with getting in and out. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much a full carryover. And then you can see the cup holder section, climate controls, got all of your charging ports again. So notice how that's carried over. Uh, armrests are identical. And going into the third row, got to scoot through, right? Notice legroom. Uh, again, I can tell you legroom's unchanged between uh, both of them. And then the other thing you guys will notice here is that you still have the same seat controls still have the usb back there so like they didn't really uh i guess do much in terms of uh moving things forward with the new one from a back seat perspective starting with the door panel here at the front of the previous version again you can see there with the padding and then the wood trim down below and the padding down below that and then all of your window controls and then you've got the memory seat function again those circular speakers which uh yeah, I, I think it's a I think it's a pretty uh, solid look. And then going over the front seats again, same setup. You Notice know, perforated there in the center. And then you got your power adjustments on the side. Pedal layout down below. And then notice you've got the parking brake. You got the pedal adjustment, and then you got the light controls. And then notice for the seats, and then for the hatch as well. The steering wheel is power adjustable. And going back over to the new one. Let's see what's new. All right. So, notice door panel again, uh, that's the same. So you still have that same appearance with everything. And then notice over window controls and then everything for the mirrors, stuff functions for the memory seats. 
Both of them do have uh, blind spot wiring for the mirrors. And then you can see the speaker for the sound system. And then again, notice there with the coloring on the stitching, which looks great. Pedal layout down below. Got the pedal adjustment, parking brake, light control, and then for the seats and then for the hatch as well. And then you can see the stitching all over. And then the power adjustment for the steering wheel. And popping in. You can see the animation here with the whole gauge cluster set up. So here's the steering wheel. And you notice here with the controls there on the steering wheel. So there's, there's a bunch of different stuff happening. Volume controls, controls for center stack. It does have adaptive cruise control. Uh, but just notice the design of the steering wheel. That's the thing that's most important is just kind of remember how what the design looks like. Because uh, that will be important when we go back to the new one. And same thing here for the gauge cluster. This is another thing that you'll see. There's a pretty big change. This is the old style gauge cluster that uh, you know, was in the previous version of the... Well, you can still get it in certain versions of the F-150. But uh, basically the every single F-150 used to have this gauge cluster before they went for the full digital and some of the higher up packages. It's not bad by any means. Um, you know, it's pretty simple in terms of the usability. And going from that to the infotainment system, uh, you can see there's a bunch of controls up above. So like hill descent controls, stability control, hazard lights, lane departure, auto stop start, and then that's for the camera system, which has a super solid camera system. You now it's got a uh, bunch of different viewpoints with the camera system itself. And so that's another big plus, right? And Normal, normal backup camera, which you can zoom in on the receiver hitch. And then going to the rest of the infotainment system, response time with the screens, it's it's solid. Uh, notice with the heated steering wheel control there, it's it's in the infotainment system. So that was something that uh, Ford was doing for a while. They only had it in the infotainment system, which was kind of uh, annoying, to be honest. So I'm glad that they've given, you know, put back a physical button, basically. But anyways, analog controls the infotainment system down below. And then notice we've got another little 12 volt and then analog controls for the climate system, heated cooled seats, you know, all the normal luxury stuff, right? Trailer backup system, and then you've got the trailer brake controls down below that. And then we've got our wireless phone charging section right there with a uh, little wood trim covering. Which definitely, you know, I actually think that looks pretty nice. And then we've got uh, but a ton of stuff here, so cup holders, right? And notice we've got the dial shifter there. It does have a manual shift function. You got the plus and minus right next to it, which is kind of interesting. I, I just imagine driving and then pressing those for the gear selection. And then the drive mode select and then drive line select. It does have four wheel auto as well as um, four wheel, or doesn't have four wheel high. So it's just four wheel auto on this. It's kind of weird that there's no uh, four wheel high function on it. Interesting. Um, Anyways, you can see the different drive modes. You get your Eco, Sport, Tow Haul, Mud Ruts, Sand, Grass, Gravel, Snow, and then you notice know, back to normal. It's like a circle to go through the different drive modes. And then here's the center console setup. You can see just like the F-150. And notice the stitching and padding on that. And then same thing with the glove box. You can see similar to the F-150. Great storage space. And then notice the padding there on the dash as well. And then universal garage door openers here at the top. And then sunglass holder. And then controls for the full panoramic sunroof. Uh, I'll talk about pricing when we go over the pricing with the Expedition Stealth, by the way. If you guys are wondering on that, so you can do a price comparison. But that's everything for the top of the previous version. So, back into the new one. You can see it's a little bit different with the gauge cluster, right? So let's kind of focus on the key differences. So we've got the steering wheel out of the new F-150 here. So you can see, uh, first off, got the red stitching. And uh, overall, just it's a much more modern looking steering wheel. Controls look a little bit nicer. It just has more upscale appearance to it. And definitely, again, makes the interior feel just a little bit more modern. Same thing with the gauge cluster. we got the full digital gauge cluster, which... Uh, I've, I've seen mixed uh, comments on this. Some people love it. I love it. <laughs> um, other people don't like it so much. They kind of... Uh, wish there was some analog and then notice here at the drive modes, uh, you know similar drive mode setup But we got these cool animations that actually show the expedition now It's just like a basic expedition it doesn't show your specific uh, expedition when you go through the drive modes uh, F-150 is the same thing, but it, it's cool that it at least has that animation Which uh, I don't know just kind of brings things up and then here's the infotainment system So a lot larger than the previous version 
Uh, there's, there's quite a bit happening with it. So this is the infotainment system out of the Mach-E. I believe that was the first Ford to adopt this uh, system. And it's solid. You can see from a camera perspective, uh, you've got you know really good resolution just like the previous version. And you've got a bunch of different viewpoints that you can go through. Uh, and so it's it's just really solid from a camera perspective. I don't think that there's a preference that I have of one or the other from a camera perspective. I feel like they're both pretty equal. Uh, and then notice with the parking assistance right there. Uh, and then the infotainment system has like different sections. So notice this top section, you can access the Android Auto and Apple CarPlay there. And then you've got, you know, the media stuff there at the top as well. And then you've got stuff for like the phone, right? And then climate down below. And you still get heated, cold seats, uh, as you can see right here. That's a little bit different in terms of turning those functions on. And then self-heated steering wheel there within the infotainment system on the new Expedition. And then notice here at the stability control down below. And then auto stops right, you can turn that on or off. And then this tray is this, the, you know, different material used on the outside, but the tray function is the same with the wireless phone charger underneath. And then here is the dial shifter again. That's all the same, right? Notice we do have a locker for the rear though. And then you can see the plus and minus for the gear selection. And then we have uh, known as four wheel high as well as four wheel low. So the other one doesn't have four wheel high at all, which is kind of strange to me. But yeah, this one has all of the driveline selects. And yeah, love that aesthetic there with that center console is unchanged so that is a complete carryover then we've got the glove box and uh, again carried out of the f-150 so has that new style stylized look which i think looks great and then notice this padding and stitching there on the dash as well and then popping up top panoramic center just like the other one and you can see all the controls for that and this is where things get shocking so Again, this is an Expedition Max with the Stealth Package, well, Stealth Performance Package. So it's stickers for $84,000. The other limited that is in this review, the Old Body Style, stickers for $74,000. So it's a $10,000 price difference between them. They're not complete apples to apples, but relatively similar, right? They all have the same luxury features. It's just that the new one has, you know, that cool exterior styling, and then it has, uh, you know, more power and more torque out of the powertrain. So I guess that's that'll get me to... Um, give you guys an answer of which one you should go for so first off um again there's a lot of carryover into the new one and so the the main benefits of the new one is again more power more torque and i think even though a lot of the stylistic cues have stayed the same interior and exterior does look better uh you know especially the dash in the new one looks a lot better with the gauge cluster the bigger infotainment system and then just how they've uh, organized everything and then look at the steering wheel all that i think it looks better uh, and then same thing with the exterior just how they've changed the front end and the taillights and everything i think that also looks better as well is it really worth ten thousand dollars more uh, that's a, that's a tough one because again you can get all the same luxury features with the 21 then as what this 22 has for a 10 grand price difference which is quite a bit of money and so if it's just a utility vehicle right you're just using it to move people around and you just want the luxury features, then yeah, probably not. But yeah, if you if you want the cooler looks and you want the cooler looking interior and you want the more modern feel, then yeah, the new one's going to be worth it. And it does come with a few more things, right? It has four wheel high and it has a locker, right? It's And again, it has more power. So there is some extra stuff. It's just, you'll have to decide if that extra stuff's really worth the $10,000.